Welcome back, everybody. I hope you've got a coffee or a cup of tea, my preference. We're back for the winner's match, and this is going to be a good one because Polt takes on a laser. Joining me on the desk this time in control, as always. I don't need to see this time if it's always you. You've been doing an excellent and a stellar job. Uh, joining us this time is Rotterdam. Great job casting that time and happy to have you on the desk. You're much better than your partner, Nathanius. And I prefer a cup of monster. Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we have that around here, sorry. We do. That's not Roddy's favorite choice. You are drink. doing Actually. a great job at the casting desk, by the way. And I think the Thanes is doing a pretty good job as well. I agree. You are the best, by the way. You are the number one Twitch streamer, and that's why you're here. You're always consistent, Roddy. I'm just a little bit sad, Sean, because yesterday I was on a roll with my predictions, and today it is not going uh, well. We're going to be looking at them. Going he well, so took. I'm a little bit lost for words. I'm just thinking about, like, I, I build up some momentum. You know, people took screenshots. They send it. They're like, wow, Roddy's an oracle. And now I feel like I've let everyone down, we're including gonna, myself. We're going to be wow. looking at those in a, in a couple of minutes. Same here, I don't know if you, you guys at home have been tweets. doing well. People are like, Jeff is so smart, <laughs> he's in last place, but this is so weird, you know? And I have a similar vibes, I'm getting those too, sadly. Uh, let's check in with the bracket, as we have reached the winner's final now, and it is going to be, as already mentioned, a laser from Poland, the 17-year-old, who's already gone through the Season 2 champion, now lines himself up against the Season 1 champion, and what an epic way to make it to the playoffs yeah. if he's able to beat yeah. Polt here. If he does, there is a bit of a continuation going on WCS that is get eliminated, find a way to advance anyways, and then advance from there. <laughs> Elfie is in the round of 16 right now. I mean, he's actually in the in the bottom part right now. He was now. eliminated in Challenger. <laughs> I mean, it would be even more yes. epic because not only did he come in as a last minute replacement, he would be the season two and season one champion. Yeah. Like, you can't even script it like that. It's amazing. I, I That's feel too like cheesy for a Hollywood in story. Bowling. I know. I, yeah, in front of yeah, I, know. I feel like all the players that have the introductions to stage, everyone yeah. comes in through the stage, but Elise is like, surfed across the fans to get to the stage after We don't have victories. a video for him, guys. They're like, you know, all these interviews we're doing? There's not even one for him because he's so <laughs> last minute. He was. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, couldn't make one for him. Um, we do have the map vetoes. I've just been told. Okay. The map vetoes are ready for these three players. So where are we going to take Coda the fight? and what other two maps? I'm not going to look. Terraform. Coda first. Yeah. Oh, I was in, I didn't know third, so I looked. Bridgehead. Mm. I'm a little bit surprised to see Bridgehead there because the last few times I saw Paul play TVZ on Bridgehead, it just didn't go that well. And I, like everything that Todd said, you know, Paul has either not checked the rocks or he dies to an all-in. It just doesn't seem like yeah. one of his favorite maps. So I'm surprised that he decided to veto Iron Fortress or Cactus Valley. I mean, I guess his game early today on Cactus Valley wasn't phenomenal either. So maybe he's like, well, let, let's try Bridgehead one more time. But I don't think he's very happy with Bridgehead. Maybe, I mean, all he has to do is tech up to put a depot there and be like, aha, you're working on the rock. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it can still be difficult, though. If it's like a 9-10 Roach all-in, this is not like there is no ramp anymore. So if he goes for a 3CC mm. opening, which is his strength, then he still barely has any units, and it's very hard to deal with. That's why we got him here. That's why That kind it. of analysis. That, I mean, that's just number one, number one Twitch Number one. <laughs> number one, baby. <laughs> I hate yeah, you guys. <laughs> you love us. You love us. Um, are we expecting a laser to come with, uh, with all... All guns blaring here to take this series? I'm expecting a lot out of him, and I, I yeah. really do. And also, like, Paul won against Violet, and that's great, because he lost against him two weeks ago. But I didn't feel like we were watching Paul in his prime over there. There were multiple moments where Marines didn't uh, walk away from yeah. bailings. Like, that's so uncharacteristic. Yeah. There was barely any aggression. Like, I think that if Paul brings the same level of play as he did in his first series, I truly believe in a laser. A laser wanted to play Paul too. Yeah, he, he said he saved his special builds for the ZBZ potential. He also said that he, early on, I mean, before the group even started, he's like, oh no, uh, I think it was Pig that was saying this. He yeah. was like, oh, I'm going to make it out of this group. The other guys are the ones that I can beat. All right, so this is the time I've been looking at, is checking in with the predictions. See how everyone's been doing. I wonder how you guys been doing at home. There's obviously people who've done 100%. But here we go so far. Mm -hmm. Kolaris and Nathanius are in the lead. Of all people, with 63% right. <laughs> There's one guy in last place, though. 25%. Now, remember, Apollo, as I said yesterday, it's not how we start, it's how we finish. Right now, I'm at 25%. I'm feeling good about the direction of where these are going, though. I'm good but to see I'm tied up with Todd, but Kev, 50-50. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's been very rough, man. A couple of big surprises, of course, and 
Also, that there were a couple of 50-50 series. I maybe should have believed a little bit more. It's mostly Petraeus, though. That, that bloody guy from New Zealand winning <laughs> both series. Like, I really didn't he expect is, him He is, by the play. way, from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. He's definitely Don't get that not wrong. from Australia. He's definitely not from Australia, Jeff. We learned that yesterday. I learned that. But let's let's look at the predictions for this game, because this could make a difference depending on who's mm -hmm. picked what. So uh, we'll bring that up in a couple of seconds. Who have you gone for? I have mad respect for Kevin. You went for? I went for a laser. Wow. Yeah. That's why you're the number one, baby. <laughs> Also no, I, why? It. Why? Sucking up because I, I, I see a little bit of a resemblance between Zancer and Elaze. They're both very young, very fast. By the way, also 330 APM, 320, 330. And once again, I was just not terribly impressed by the way that Paul played in the previous series. The fact that he won is obviously great. And, you know, we can quote Vin Diesel again. It doesn't matter how you win or it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning is winning. But that's it. That I, I kind of felt, yeah, I know. I didn't really want to go there. It's such a mouthful, you know. But I, I do truly think that if Elaze brings his A, game right now i think elaser can do it pig roddy and todd those are the three that have gone with the polish boys everyone else has gone with the season one champion i think if you would have done this prediction if this, if this was the first match if it was a laser versus pole yeah, then zero, it was zero. the 8-0 for pole yeah and i think it's pretty cool that everyone saw they're like holy cow we this believe this guy just beat hydra and i do agree i mean it's kind of to be honest i'm a little bit of like a Historian of how we talk about pole, but all, all the WCS were always well. No, there's only one of those. But for the rest of us, we're all we're like pole. We're like that didn't impress me that whole much either. So man. are you saying that Pole no. has to step it up now coming into this one, even yeah. though on no, paper he should I be think, beating a laser? I think he can play exactly like he just did and unimpressively beat the <laughs> laser. Probably, I think for his hopes of if he wants to go on and actually win this WCS, yes, I think uh, like. Like Kevin was talking about, there was a couple times where his entire—it wasn't even just like Marines. It was actually the entire army got yeah. mainlinged. And yes, there was aggression going around the map, but we expect from Polt, a champion of all continents, by the way, of StarCraft II, to come out of those situations ahead. So this is the, this is the like, hey, you've got a laser in the winning match. You can go to the round of eight. You can win thousands of more dollars, get more points, start earning uh, a better seed in that, at that BlizzCon. Put this guy away. And if this is a tough match, I think that's a warning sign. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. A big game coming up. Can a laser make it to play in the playoffs and play in front of a live Polish audience? A huge moment for the youngster. Let's find out if he can do it. That's right. He's been able to topple one WCS champion at the moment. And now he goes up against a three-time WCS champion. So the six heap are getting higher and higher here. This is for a spot in the round of eight here. And if Laser is able to make that position in first place in this group, I can't think of a bigger upset in WCS. This would be absolutely mon monstrous. Mm. And, you know, this is his first time making it to the round of 16 of a WCS. Last season was the first time he even made it into Premier yeah. League. And to go from there to making it out first in your group to the round of eight, that would be absolutely astonishing. Let's get into it. Game number one here of the winner's match for Group C. As we have spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner, it is our Red Zerg representing Team Extreme Supremacy. It is Elazer. And up to the top left-hand corner, we have our blue Terran, representing CM Storm. It is Pulse. You can hear the cheers of the Polish fans mm. there here in the studio, obviously getting very excited for Elisa, but we can't forget about Polt and just how powerful this player has been historically. Polt is a many-time champion of WCS and many other tournaments. He won a GSL back in the day. He has just had so many results, and even when people have started to make whispers throughout the scene of, oh, I don't know if Polt's still performing, he always comes out and brings it back. He always goes into sets, loses a game, doesn't look the best, and then just suddenly steps it up a notch. And that is why Polt is never a player to be counted out. So one thing I actually said during the break uh, to you while we were watching the previous series as well, but I feel like Polt just doesn't kind of buckle under the pressure against uh, non-Koreans in particular. I think he goes in with such a, a confident mindset against them, uh, especially here in the World Championship Series. So I, I think that certainly helps out Polt, whereas going up against someone like Violet, who he, you got to remember, they were housemates for a long time, so there was, there's was there got to be a little more going on there than just a friendly StarCraft game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're playing a win, and they're playing as hard as they can. And I mean, Polt is a guy who goes into these matches, and he always says, it doesn't matter who I'm playing against. Mm. If it goes long enough, I will win. 
I'm just better. You know, as long as he says there's, there's always a, a bit of a chance that someone can catch me off guard with something, the longer a game goes, the more chances I have to show my skill, the more chances of me crushing my opponent. He brings that confidence, and we saw it there. Even though there were some moments where he looked a little bit in doubt in that first game, especially last series, he brought it back, looked incredibly solid after that. So Eliza definitely has his work cut out for him. The big question here for me though is, is there any room for Eliza to do something crazy or is he going to try and test his metal here? I know it's a bit hard to, uh, a question to ask here at this stage of the game here, uh, Pig, but... I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the the long shot. And go oh for it. well, I think a laser is a player who's so mechanically minded, so confident. I think he will go in here looking to put the pressure on, mm -hmm. looking to multi prong, and really play Polt in a sort of straight up match. But it'll be very harassment based. Lots okay. of counter attacks. Yep. A laser calls himself the European Life. Those are his own words from last season of WCS, and he's shown it before in his Zerg vs Terran. Certainly doesn't want to be losing this Reaper to start things off. At least he's got the Lings to uh, slow this pace of this Reaper down so that the Queen can come out. And as long as he doesn't lose drones, that's the all-important thing he needs to defend at this phase in the game. Yeah, not taking any chances. Building a whole six Zerglings, only losing one of them so far. And of course, the Queen can deflect that Reaper. A very typical opening out of a laser so far. Not playing overly safe, just going for the hatchery first into the fast Ling speed, now adding the third Queen. But he is going up against a three Reaper opening from Polt. So Polt's looking to put on the aggression very heavily. Exactly the same as he loves to always do on this map, but this is very hard to stop. Hasn't been able to see the third command center going down just yet here, despite having two overlords very, very close uh, to that location. But uh, with the Reapers just poking and prodding, doing what they can at the moment, that's where his main attention is focused on. But Polt behind this playing, you know, a pretty greedy style. Mm, yeah, going up to those three command centers. Of course, these three Reapers, though, they can do a bit of a run around. Mm. laser needs to make sure they don't find their way into an unguarded mineral line or things can get out of control pretty fast. Yeah, and also needs to make sure here that he's not sacrificing too much of the health on these queens. Although oh. that one went a bit too far. The positioning at the top of the ramp. A beautiful uh, creep tumor snipe, but losing the Reaper for it, mm. ooh, that's really hard. So that does slow down the next wave of Pult's aggression. It makes it hit with a lot less oomph. However, a laser's creep spread, it's already past six minutes, and he doesn't have a single creep tumor spread out front his natural just yet. That really slows down his expansion onto the map. Third base now been spotted here. Well, third command center been spotted by the Overlord, so at least the laser does know exactly what he's playing against. Uh, as we will have the Reapers coming back. They know that speed is finished for these Zerglings, and Reapers don't have the luxury of being able to get away from them so easily uh, on a flat plane. So that's why you've got to bring them on home once that does complete. Oh, those Zerglings from a laser looking like he wants to dart into the natural and do a counterattack as Polt's trying to harass him. And now, as he sees the Hellions come into his Overlord vision, he darts into that natural and he's going to try and pick up a few SCV kills. Not too bad. That mule's just dropped actually as well. If he was able to get that, that's uh, a lot of minerals opportunity cost down the pan there for a moment. And we'll finally be cleaned up. Getting the mule was, you know, okay. Does only get one drone kill uh, SCV as well. Hmm. So not a bad pickup by a laser, just kind of pulling a bit of the pressure away from him. But at home, he is getting that Spire started, doesn't have a third base. Polt seeing this now, he knows what he's up against. He says, okay, there's something you're doing on two base. I'm not sure exactly what it is yet, but the first thing that pops into a Terran's mind is fast Mutalisks, oh, yeah. and that's what he's going to have to watch out for. Yep. And also doing a good job of actually killing off some of these creep tumors on the front. He would ideally like to do some damage towards these queens uh, to be able to uh, try and harass those a little bit allow this uh, tanking from the Reapers at the front, but it was some good focus fire from the Queens to work on the Hellion, which does put a little bit of a timer on that force. Polt wanting to just keep a laser back. Of course, Polt's got this economic play. He's clearing up the Overlords on the map, trying to slow down the creep, Ooh. and does scout through. Yeah, getting the information. Sees the Spire as well there. That Reaper was not in vain. He had did a little hop, skip, and a jump there at the very end. But yeah, he got the information he needed. And now that we have Widow Mines on the way, double engineering bay going down, he can add some missile turrets on if he wants to, and they'll be in time for those Mutalisks. Really nice economic buildup from Polt so far. And wow, oh. so many creep tumor snipes. These queens being forced to use all their energy just to replace tumors and even getting a bit of damage on that hatchery. This is a very powerful opening from Polt. So far exerting his mechanics to keep a laser pinned back. And behind this, Polt is just macroing with absolutely no fear. Yeah, looking pretty comfortable. We're gonna be the counter attack here. It kind of comes back to what you were saying at the beginning of this series, where you know he's gonna have to try and use these small counter attacks to try and do some damage towards Polt, but all these oh. queens. Oh, no. being this far out and sacrificed off for just a few Hellions. It's, it does hurt. It is a big bruise. That's actually massive. 
because there's only a few creep tumors out. There isn't even an extra queen to inject this third hatchery when it finishes. That's a massive loss for a laser. That's queens he has to keep rebuilding, which right now should be drones for his third base. Mm. With an already delayed third, now he has a lot of pressure on him to get something done with these mutilists. He really needs to put the pressure back on pole. A few more missile turrets about to finish up here. Wherever those widow mines, we heard them. And oh, two of them actually do manage to connect with those mutilists for a moment there. But there's not enough mobile anti-air to be able to shut that down. So he is finding a little bit of damage in towards that mineral line, getting some of those SCVs that are in the uh, refinery. The laser's multitasking starting to show here. Does pick off the refinery while surrounding a couple of Hellions at the front. That's a really nice pickup for a laser as he does struggle to get those drones out on that third base. He's still at a very low work account, only 46. He's struggling for gas income right now. So even though Polt seems to be pinned back on two bases, a laser's third has not kicked in yet. Yeah, looking to just kind of get himself a widow mine. Not too bad at all. On the very edge of another widow mine, of course, you are able to see those small little crater uh, in Elaza's vision if he goes anywhere near them. But obviously, kind of difficult to spot. Oh, finding a nice. hole in the anti area once again. Elaza, look at this. And there's no missile turret in the back of this natural. Going to pick up a couple of SCV kills as well. This is great usage of these mutilists. Yeah. This is where Elaza really starts to shine. Yeah, it looks like he's very, very confident in his control here and working his way all the way to the back, delaying the armory from finishing up. If he was able to get the cancel on that, he'd significantly delay too, too, actually. And look at this, just Ooh. small Zergling numbers coming. The muters realizing they've got the numbers to take the fight, but they do pull back a losing a mutilist. But these Zerglings at the third, look at the pressure. Polt is actually taking a lot of damage here. And this is not a lot of units. The laser's investing into this. Behind this, he is droning up that third base. He is adding his upgrades, but he continues to get profits out of these yeah. small numbers of units. Right now, Polt needs to open up the taps and go wild because at the moment, we're seeing a laser here really kind of out control him. This oh is my very God. well done. Didn't even start 2-2 before the engineering bay went down. Sorry, uh, armory went down. That's a big deal here. That's a one minute delay on those upgrades. And at the same time, Banelink's coming into the third. A laser just coming in from All every over. angle. He will not let up. He will not give Polt space. And look at this Polt refusing to put down extra turrets. He's taking so much damage from these Mutalisks. I think a laser so far, I mean, not only beating Hydra, but even in the opening stages of this game is really surpassing a lot of people's expectations. And what a place to do it right here, right now in Poland. As at the moment, he is keeping the, uh, one of our former WCS champions on the back foot. Oh, wow. Coming in with these counterattacks once again. Looking to get some damage done. Going to ca catch some Hellions out front. Nice. The pressure. Polt is just unable to deal with all these attacks in different locations. And a laser is pinning him back while he's getting his fourth base down. Even though his 1-1 upgrades were so far behind Polt earlier, he has delayed Polt so much that he is actually equal on upgrades mm. now. Polt going to try and add to the chaos here and try and draw his opponent back with this drop. Heading on into the main base, getting as many drones as he can. But at the same time, those links will be able to shoo it away. Also has to pick up and get out of there. Mutalisk's chasing that down. He's going to have to drop everything, otherwise it'll just die in the motor back. Nice chase down here from a laser. These pickups are fantastic. Polt's trying to buy a bit of space for him. Yeah. This does pull a laser away. It allows Polt to start the 2-2, to start the drilling claws. He's got the second factory down now. You know, he's starting to get back to where he needs to be, but he's been shoved back a lot. And now, even though a laser's queens were stunted in the early game, his creep was pushed back, we can see that a laser's also settling into the macro phase. Ooh, forgetting his plus two carapace, as mm. Funk has pointed out, though. Yeah, and that can always hurt when you're a Zerg because oftentimes, oh no, he actually remembered it. That's really good because sometimes you remember it when your hive is finished and oh, you're like, right, yeah. it's time to get my, oh, I can't get 3-3. Three, three. I guess I'm going <laughs> for 3-2. That is three, the two. worst feeling as a Zerg yeah. player, but a laser is on point today, catching all these little things and, oh, even more Banelings wanting to run into the third. This is a laser style, but a great wall from Pulp forcing the Banelings to run in an awkward direction. Yeah. That taking was, a pretty bad trade. I mean, just the Ling alone was really cool to send forwards to soak it up, knowing that it would always be there, but still, actually, more Ling's Flooding forwards here. They're going to catch a big chunk of units there. Boosts on out, keeps himself alive with that medevac. Very good retreat out there by Paul. Very nice escape. A laser coming Whoa. in though. He's going to pick up a lot of the widow mines. And four. is he going for the kill? Hold the line for. Hold the line. That's a lot of banelings there. They do crash through towards buildings, but good splits there by Paul, making sure that not all that army is going to get crashed on by acid. Bit of an awkward uh, attack there from a laser, but he did get the Thor, did push Polt back, and Polt really does feel cramped in his side of the map. Meanwhile, a laser's creep spread starting to catch up a little bit. Does seem like he needs to put a bit more focus into that defensive focus. I mean, right now it just seems to be attack, 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 and mm. is Polt maybe just planning to weather the storm like he did against Violet? Well, one of those overseers, uh, overseer, just focused up. 
soaked up one of the winner mine shots at least and he is still once again finding small little areas of weakness but the marines coming back and i think you know getting a few mutalists for that trade was was all right there for paul Holt seems to be settling into this style of game. He's seen how a laser likes to play, and we can see him adapting. He's just sitting there and yeah. defending. He's got these great walls, and I think he's waiting for a laser to overextend. We can see a laser is really keen to keep on attacking these tra trades. They're not really getting anything. Yeah, and at the same time, I mean, shouldn't Holt really be trying to go for the 3-3 three, three very soon? He's got his 2 plus 2 2 finished, but when uh, Terran starts opening up, the real taps and going for the 3-3. Three, three. That's where it starts to get a little bit scary for Zerg. Yeah, I mean, he's giving a lot of time. Uh, his three plus three attack just starting now. And Elaza's actually gone up to 80 drones in the midst of this. He's taking the gases on his fourth base. Mm. Elaza, staying at that low three base economy for a, a long time, now suddenly has said, it is time. I am going to go up in this big boost of drones. And from now on, I can afford to trade a lot less efficiently. I can start throwing banelings at you from all directions. And Pult being so far pinned back, it's a scary situation for him. Yeah, it's like it's it's a marine lord setup, but with uh, bio. <laughs> so it's it's gonna you know work out okay for now. He keeps finding some of these mutalists uh, towards the left hand side, and with three three rapidly approaching, I don't think that an infestation. Oh, nice widow mine connection. He got some two SC uh, supply depots, but it's not matter. Oh, uh, these trades are actually really bad for a laser. Look at this. Pult is now overtaking in supply. And remember, Pult has got the Spiri upgrades yeah. on the way. A laser doesn't have a hive. A laser's infestation pit is only just starting. Yeah. A laser needs to spread creep. What he's doing is fantastic if Pult's attacking into him. But Pult's not. Pult has adjusted his game plan. He's sitting back defensively. And a laser is getting antsy. Rather than spreading creep and using his defensive advantages, he's trying to force his way in. But Pult is adapting fantastically so far. That's a really good point. I mean, as much as a laser has done a good job of keeping the fights on his opponent's side of the map. It looks like that's been taxing him quite hard to the point where you're, you're right that, you know, the creep isn't as well established that it would like to be. Normally you would like to see it encroaching on towards that fourth location of the Terran at the moment, but right now, Paul has been able to take that location and look to put on pressure towards the fifth base. Oh, if he can get a snipe on that fifth base, that's a huge pickup for Paul. That would be absolutely fantastic. That would be great, but Eliza sees it. And not willing to really run into all of those with just the links. So waits for his Bane links. That one poor Marine gets left there. Oh, looks like Pult finally feels like it's time here. Pushing out into the middle of the map. His 3-3 is not done just yet. But as he's pulled a lot of Elaze's forces out of position, yeah. he might take this opportunity to stim forward. Set up some of those Widow Mines here. They're very important. A lot of Banelings morphing in towards the back lines here. And he's already pre-split some of these Marines, which the Banelings don't really do a huge amount to. Links coming in from the backside. Likewise, the Mutalists is coming along as well. With all the Thors dead, maybe they'll be able to help out, especially with those Banelings. Gonna force Paul away. Wow, what a hold from a laser going in in separate waves, detonating all the Widow Mines, and then his second wave of Banelings forcing the retreat out of Pult. A very good cleanup for a laser. We can see him taking an impression. Oof. Supply lead right now, but the upgrades are about to kick in. And this is where a lack of creep is going to hurt him going on the counter attack like this. Not easy to do that when you don't have the high mobility of having creep pushing up towards that fourth base. Or fifth base, I should say. Mm -hmm. Oh, third base. Fourth base. Yeah, if Polk can establish that fourth and really lock it down, I mean, with these upgrades over time, he should be more cost efficient. We are seeing him building a lot more Widow Mines at this point of the game, not staying on that Hellbat focus like he was against Violet. He's really uh, going to try and power into that and even getting those armor upgrades for his vehicles, which should trade very well as the game progresses. Now Hive on the way for Elaze. So eventually he can try and catch up with 3-3, but it is going to be a long, long way away as these Zerglings once again look to put on the counter-attack, force a response more than anything here. And already Polt has units available to him in that location, so shouldn't be too worried. Mm, bit of mismanagement there from a laser, not quite on top of that, distracted oh, by this drones. drop. Drones, 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 he's got to be careful about this. All the links flooding on in, and he should be eventually be able to clean that up, so good reactions once again here. What's scary for a laser at this point is his gas count is not that high. He's heading towards mm. Hive. He's rebuilding a lot of mutalisks he's lost in these battles. But he doesn't have that impressive Bane Link out. He's only got about 20 Bane Links, 10 more morphing right now. And as Pult is maxed, he may need a lot more Bane Links than that to actually take on the big fight. Yeah. So a laser needs to buy time. And that's what these muters are going to try to do. He finds himself the three missile turrets. I think even a contamination on one of the production buildings here. Uh, but at the same time, 
This is quite a strong army. How many Bailings does he even have? He has 30 at the moment. They're going to try and swell forward. Good little flank towards the back here from Lings and Bailings, crashing into everything at the front. But the Thors at the back still survive. The Moodless have been magic boxed there to try and rival against that position, but it wasn't enough. Polt retains a lot of his army. Fantastic spreading. Good Widow Mine count. Good Thor count. Better upgrades off Creep. That fight was so well done by Polt getting a laser to attack into a horrible yeah. position, and he just took such a cost-efficient fight. Look at this, these Mutalisks trying to go in here valiantly, but they just can't make it happen. Oh, getting shredded here as the Lings are just going to filter on through. This is a conveyor belt for them, though. There's not r room left. GG, game number one will go to the three-time WCS champion here in the round of 16 winners match for Group C. And uh, overall, you know, I we saw the development there of a laser to try and use those counterattacks constantly throughout the game, but you picked it very well. You know, Polt was able to adapt throughout even just that game, never mind the full series. Absolutely, and a laser there, he played fantastically. He put himself in a great position, but we could see the inexperience there in just sticking on that autopilot, trying to force the attacks, and it just wasn't the right thing. Polt adjusted perfectly. All right, well, we're going to go to a short break, guys, and when we are back, it will be game number two here between Polt and laser from the World Championship Series. Game on here for the World Championship Series as our three-time WCS champion in Polt is at one game up currently against Elaza, who was able to defeat our recent defending champion in Hydra just before in this group. And obviously, Elaza playing out a really strong game one, no denying it there, but... Pult's, Pult's tenacity always, almost always is able to win him through. I mean, if at any point there, Pult gave a laser a bit more of an opportunity, maybe stepped out and was caught by surprise while trying to attack into a laser, I feel like a laser could have pulled that together. Mm. The way he just pinned Pult back for so long in that game was impressive. But at the same time, Pult is such an experienced player. He's adapted so well. Before game one was even over, he already got a hold of what exactly what was going on stylistically, and it has changed his play. Now going into game two, it's all about can a laser do the same thing? Can he change it up? Let's find out as we get into game number two. The winner moves on to the top eight here in season three, the final season the heart of the swarm as we are going to have spawning over to the right hand side it is our blue terran representing cm storm it is Polt. and of course to the left hand side we have our red zerg representing team extreme supremacy and poland it is Ilaza. big crowd favorite here now, though, he does have to play on Polt's map choice, Bridgehead. A <laughs> bit of a wild map, and uh, here in Zerg vs. Terran, we've seen, you know, if the Zerg player can make it up to the late game, it's fantastic, but getting there is the problem. There's destructible rocks where Terran players yeah. like to do tank drops behind. There's all sorts of just multi-pronged play, and because the Zerg has to spread creep in two different paths, not knowing where the Terran's going to attack, it's so difficult to mm. actually get that map presence. It's a really good point, and it's not like it's two paths that 
um, c converge from a certain location, like on many maps, where you just have to spread it from your natural forwards, and then it kind of branches out. Yeah. They're so far apart of those two main paths that you really need to actually spread this creep down. So very important here for Elaser to be having good overall positioning from their very start to try and compensate for something like that at the beginning. Absolutely, you've got to find a way to get that out there and use those Overlord Vision to deflect any attack coming your way. And uh, another feature, of course, is that there is a lot of distance between your bases. Just generally, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of space for air harassment and very mobile unit harassment. Things like Hellion drops, uh, dropping Hellions in, morphing them to Hellbats while hitting on the other side with a squad of Marines. Likewise, the Zerg can throw the same strategies out there. And as uh, the guys on the desk were talking about before, roach timings on the back rocks are a potential as well. <laughs> Try and open up that big wide back door. So we might see something like that. Yep, let's see if Laser wants to go on the crazier side of things. And I wouldn't mind it, to be honest, at all. Once again, um, as much as he really is giving th these champions a really good run for their money, Still, you know, a laser is in the challenger seat. He's in he's in the hot seat as it were. It's hit these are his games to win for sure. And the thing is is that if a laser did go th through in first place in this group, that would not only be amazing for him uh, in a in a career in career terms, but for our Koreans, it would be a disaster. Only one of them going through out of the three of Paul, Hydra and Violet. Is, yeah, I mean, Crazy. that would turn this tournament upside down in yep. terms of everyone's expectations when they saw the round of 32. And now, you know, to see some of them eliminated would be crazy. But uh, the Reaper's going to come in here nice and early. Paul just always wanting to play so safe with that early Reaper scout, get some pressure on, make sure his opponent's up to no tricks. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's good stuff. And... We'll just continue to dance on around, at least. The one thing that's interesting on Bridgehead here for the Reaper is that there isn't actually that much room to jump across into your... It's only down here, really, uh, where Mr. Funker is highlighting, and that's why the Zerglings are trying to deny that location specifically. Even though there's tons of cliffs that look like you can jump up them, that's not to be the case. Yeah, you can't actually go over those. I remember the first time I played this map, I thought, oh my, damn man, <laughs> Reapers are going to destroy me. And then I realized I couldn't jump up there, and I was like, oh, it's all okay. But Polt, nonetheless, is going to go for some heavy aggression. He's going to go three Reaper. He felt how he allowed to, he was able to kind of put on so much pressure, delay a laser's third last yeah. game, kill all his creep tumors, kill a lot of queens. I think Polt feels like if I can just keep putting the pressure on this young kid, this this guy, I'm going to be able to make sure he can't, he can't knock me out of this tournament. Tournament. A laser, though, has shown his resilience before. He managed to get back into a great position last time around. How much of his resolve can we'll continue on? Already getting this queen potentially very, very close to going down. Pulls back those Reapers, pulls back the queen, keeps everything alive on both sides of the spectrum. Down to five health. And he does back that one out. That one goes to the natural, and for very good reason. I mean, losing a queen that early would be absolutely appalling, but third CC follow up for Pult so far. Into a starport. Mm. Looks like Polt down to the down to the core, right? He's always gonna get the starport. He's gonna get a Viking out. He's just gonna do some Hellion Reaper pressure. Uh, the Hellions always being a little bit delayed though when you do go for this three Reaper opening. And once again, a laser looking like he wants to go for two base Mutalisk Rush. He just wants to get those muters out. And if he can get the sort of damage he did last game, I can see him getting into a very nice position on Bridgehead. Yeah, good, that's for sure. Um at least though. Elaza had good reads into everything that was going on much, much earlier, I feel, in this game than the previous one. He'd seen the Triple Command Center very quickly. Now he's just going to have to deal with this usual follow-up. One Reaper heads up there for the high ground vision. And even if the Lings were there to greet it, the Hellions would be able to fire from the low ground. So, Paul sets himself up in an okay spot there with more Hellions reinforcing. Polt wanting to deny this third base for as long as possible. As we said in the last game, this is the same build order. Polt's goal here is to deny a laser getting a third, put on pressure, slow him down while being as greedy as possible behind it. That's what these hyper-mobile units, the Hellions and Reapers, which are fantastic against Zerglings, that's what they allow Polt to do. A laser on the other side of things, teching towards Mutalisks very fast, he wants to balance that with securing that third base, and he wants to make sure he doesn't lose his queens like last game. You see, he's much more careful with his creep tumors this time, instead saving a lot of energy for transfuse on those queens, and he's going to be a lot more careful. Still trying to poke forwards at the front here. Noticeably, you can see that the Reapers tanked the majority of that damage once again from the queens. So for Paul, that's a good trade. A little bit of damage for units that are going to be able to heal up here, slowly but surely. Uh, is a nice spot as the Viking now just patrolling around. Not many, there's not any overlords, in fact, though, to be able to pick up other than maybe the ones that it's already killed, the two. 
That's a nice adjustment by Eliza, knowing the style Oof. Pot likes to play. Fantastic transfuse going down there, saving that queen. Yeah. Now that the spine crawl is down here as well, it does really make this a stronghold. Doesn't look like is going to give the chances this time around. Well, the transfuse, links move forwards there, but they don't want to get too toasty. As a few will die. 1-1 one, one is now on the way. The spire's gone down and... Uh, did he see the Spire? He, I mean, he should be inferring that it's a Spire play anyway, even though he hasn't seen it towards the back. I mean, it's been on two base for so long. There's the Missile Turrets now on the way with Pult's usual timings that he would go to. Mm, yeah, Pult, he's read his opponent well. He's saying, I figured out the way you like to play. I think this is a good way to play against it. It worked well yep. last time. I'm now going to add the Missile Turrets, secure the third, and macker up a big army. Yep. Meanwhile, the Hellions and Reapers not looking to kill, but they're looking to make sure the creep spread is slowed down. And you can see it. The creep spread is is very slow. The tumors aren't able to freely spread. Only now when the Mutalisks come out, only now does a laser have a chance to get map presence, to drone his third, to get creep control. You can notice though in the base, while these uh, Mutalisks do chase away this army now and, and don't allow it to do anything, you can see with the spread of the missile turrets, how they have been positioned compared to the previous game. Obviously, Polt realizes this map uh, the late base layout is very, very open compared to others. So you've got to be careful. Oh, Medivacs, be careful indeed. Jeez. Yeah, this is the point where last time around we saw, even though Elaza took a lot of damage last game, Elaza did huge damage with the Mutalisks. Yeah, they did. But Pult's taking a lot less chances this time around. He's actually built about five or six missile turrets across all his bases. Good. Six missile turrets. He's got great coverage. He's not going to take that chance. And a Widow Mine even there at the third. A laser, though, this is the point where we saw he loves to start putting on aggression. He's not just purely droning. He's adding a few drones, a few Zerglings, a few Banelings, a few more Muters. And he's going to keep on probing and poping, poking and trying to find those openings in Pult's defense. Yeah, not super easy for Pult to really spread himself out across all these three locations at the moment with the limited army supply that he does have. As obviously the Zerg here with the uh, usually much faster units is going to be able to position and just try and swing on in there where it can. And those two Banelings, I think they ran into a roadblock because there's a wall down towards the third yeah. on the ramp. So they couldn't micro or they couldn't guide themselves through down towards the bottom where they really and wanted to go. Look at this adjustment from Paul. He just might he just walls that off straight away yeah. saying I don't want to give a laser any chance to get into this counter attack zone. This is the zone where he's most comfortable. And notice how he hasn't gone on creep yet. He's being very careful with his pushes. He says creep wasn't your strong suit. It was having a big army early and trying to shut down my units and then get on top of my bases. Instead he's just very hesitantly looking to deny the fourth base, but he's not gonna overcommit. Notice how he's already pulling back, seeing no fourth base. It's so funny though, that, that drone got really quite fortunate in the initial vision that the Mutalisks got and then understanding that it was going to come along. Almost barely uh, was able to spot that, but Banelings are going to move forwards here against this army. The Hellbats aren't that mobile at all, so against Banelings, uh, they don't fare massively well. And in the end, there will be the trade-off and Pot will have to retreat on out. Pretty good pick up there for a laser. Keep in mind though, his fourth base has been slowed down in the midst of this. So even though he gets a medevac, gets a lot of marines and hellbats there, does lose some banelings and zerglings for it. And a laser is not playing with an economic advantage. We can see his fourth base has only just gone down now. And once again, his creep spread is not very far. He doesn't have it out the back door of his natural at all. And only now is he starting to look to put on the pressure, trying to find the damage, find the openings. Mm. So from, from here on out, I mean, for a laser, are there any particular paths that he needs to go down to really deal with this? Is it got to be just being super well defended on all these locations and trying to get this fourth base economy up and running? What What is the linchpin here for a laser to keep going forwards? It's all about how he reacts to Pult's adjustment. Pult's style here is all about sitting back, waiting for those better upgrades, waiting for those bigger armies. Remember the last battle at the end of last game where, oh, actually a really nice pick up on a couple yeah. of muters there. Good trade, good focus Whoa. fire from Pult. Banelings may unable to crash on through here towards the mineral line, get themselves 13 kills in the end. That's nice pickup there for Eliza. Very nice pickup, actually. Uh, Pult's multitasking slipping up a little bit, and Eliza, in the midst of catching the drop, sending the counterattack in it, even coming in with another wave here. Yeah, that Thor had a bit of a uh, confused moment there because he couldn't move out from the Marines. And now, with the fact that the missile turret's down in this mineral line as well, he dives in with the Mutalisks. There's always follow ups here for Eliza. This is what Eliza loves to do. He loves to just throw in wave after wave of aggression, and he's so good at picking that moment when Polt is distracted somewhere else that's when he runs the counter attack in he never just does one thing at a time it's all about abusing Polt's lack of focus trying to make sure it's impossible even with high APM Polt can't be looking at three places at once yeah. so he does these great little attacks in many locations however Polt is building up a huge army remember the fight from last game as we we're talking about before he just was off creep with a huge widow mine Thor marine count and 
this is the sort of army Pult's building towards. A laser cannot take that same bad fight like last game. Looking at the upgrades though, 2-2 is very delayed here from a laser. So uh, Pult right now is moving ahead with his 3-3. This could be a good window for Pult to start doing something. Ooh, these Widow Mines, be careful. Uh, but at least he was able to clean that one up nicely. Another one actually gets soaked up almost fully there by an Overseer. But uh, this, these upgrades can be difficult here for the Zerg to deal with. Oh, this is really scary. I mean, Elaze's droned up his fourth base now. He can be a little bit more cavalier, but he does need to find a way to pull Pult back across the map. He needs to expand his creep spread and get out there. And it looks like he's found he wants to do it on the back rocks. We said this map's great if Zerg can multi-prong back here. And oh, that widow mine! Oh, that's gonna sting! I could feel that in my gut. When oh he went... my god, that is horrible! Yeah, not not a great trade there at all for Elias. He's gonna back off. He's like, okay, I don't want that to happen again. Uh, I guess I'll just go back home and lick my wounds for a moment. And this is exactly the sort of trade Pult, Pult wants to be picking up. Look, he doesn't even care about the creep spread. It's all about just zoning between his bases, defending. And once that 3-3 kicks in, mark my words, that is where Pult wants to make the fight happens. That is where he wants to hit a laser hard. All right, well, going to try and loop around by the looks of things here. Keep Paul back at home. Keep him on his side of the map at the moment. As Mutilus is going to go down towards the south, we have Lings and Bailings up towards the north, trying to draw Paul thin. At least he's picking up some of the Widow Mines towards the middle, but all of these Banelings, they're not going to do a whole lot at all. Oh, only getting a couple of Marines nice. for so many Banelings. I mean, getting those Widow Mines down the bottom was great. These Mutilisks are really doing work, but unfortunately their Overseers died now, so they actually can't pick up any of the rest of these Widow Mines. What are they supposed to do without the guidance of the hive mind? That's the, that's the question. Although he he went away quite a while ago. Now that I think about it, the mutilists gonna find themselves towards the natural here, and even get themselves all the missile turrets. So that actually, this leaves the base completely naked, and there's no units to reinforce. Oh, wow! And now we see bridgehead come into effect. Look how far yeah. this is away from Polt's army. This is he has to pick, to pick up. up. That's insane. He's oh got to try God. and drop to defend his own base. The orbital's getting dangerously low, but I think the marines are there just in the nick of time. Repair, repair, repair. Ugh. Okay, no, don't repair then, I guess. You can just let that die. It's a brutal little spot there. Good job by a laser to keep his opponent completely ragged across these two locations. <laughs> Banelings and SCVs, best friends forever, apparently. But uh, not for long. A laser wants to just stop this. He really does want to deny Pult's fourth base. And looking at the supply count, I mean, a laser has knocked Pult's economy down a lot. A laser is still up at 77 drones. He's on 2 2, look, Mutiling Bane, and he wants to make a big fight happen. It's 3 3 at the moment against 2 2, though, and that does hurt quite a lot with a mind. Oh, okay, so he separates up quite well there, so he opens up a path here for the Banelings to be able to move on through. Picks that command center up because he knows he could easily get destroyed, but at the same time, the is still working on it. Banelings trying to get through this Thor along with the Lings. This is a huge flood of units that he's trying to send forward, but these Marines in this defensive position trying to spread themselves out. As long as they're able to kill off a lot of the Banelings, they're going to be fine. Look how much oh, this army wow. is stimmed. Wow, the, the army is so weak. The Mute is up the top, even killing a couple of more SCVs. The economy of Pult has been absolutely shredded. Yeah, he's got a third base. He's got an orbital command there to replace his third base but just look at the look at the supplies a laser wow. has a sick strong economy back home meanwhile actually yeah, he even lost the second earlier i mean pult's mining is in tatters right now yeah. but a laser threw away a lot of army he's down in army supply he's down in upgrades a laser needs to mass up more banelings and i think pult may want to do a counter counter push and 94 army supply against 82 at the moment here in pult's favor technically but I mean, the, even these medevacs don't have energy. As we look at how much energy they've got, they can't even heal up this uh, massively stimmed army from prior battles uh, to the point where you could try and launch a very strong counterattack. Now, once again here, Eliza just sends a flock of units over towards this right-hand side and looks to put the pressure on himself. He doesn't even care too much about this base up towards the oh, top. Oh, looks like Eliza is going to come and try and defend this northern base now. This fight is going to be so pivotal, pivotal in this game. Polk cannot afford to replenish this. Yeah. He needs to win this fight. Laser's posturing, he wants to come in here. This is basically his whole army for the most part, and his Mutilus is just going to take a few extra shots here. And he's just going to push him on away, but Paul is taking this one slow, very slow up towards that location, slowly poking forwards on towards the hatchery. He'll clean that up eventually, but this is buying a laser time elsewhere to just have his economy still fully fledged. A laser has learned his lesson from last game. He is not attacking off creep into the huge spread of Terran. Instead, he's going for the counterattack. He saw the damage he did with that last assault, and he realizes, yeah, I might not have the upgrades, but I have the mobility. This is a huge map. There are multiple paths, and I am going to crash into your economy, crash into your production, 
this is where I'll win the game. I mean, Nine Mutalist just popped out as well. He's going to contaminate some of this production facility. Elaser knows he is running away with this right now. And uh, he's played out Bridgehead beautifully. He's played it exactly how it needs to be. Hitting the north, hitting the south, hitting the north, hitting the south with the superior mobility that he has. The moment of reckoning is still up here, though. This is still a massive army from Pulp. 122 army supply up against 107 of a laser. And there is not that many Lings and Banelings here. A laser will need to give up this base. He cannot fight that army until he's ready. He gives up the hive. And all those Banelings need to be able to do something here. And they will be able to crash through, but they're trying to get on towards the Marauders, separating things back up. But the Banelings catch on all, all the way up to the top as well. There's so many Mutalisks here. Not that much anti-air left here. Only those Marines up towards the top that survive, along with this one last thought. But that's going to end up falling. And a laser is able to push this army all the way out. Wow, what a hold for a laser there. Managing to hang on. I mean, it's such a chaotic point to defend, but he managed to bring his reinforcements in from behind, from the front and the top all at once. And that surround on his army was huge. Remember, a laser's still got a big functioning economy. Pult still in a mess. He's trying to rebuild his SCVs, but he just doesn't have the numbers. A laser proving to himself in spades in game number two that he can go toe to toe here with Pult, a WCS champion of the past. And at the moment, he's just putting on so much pressure against Pult. Pult is scrambling to stay alive, even losing a few of these precious SCVs that he has up towards the third base. What great play from a laser. Ling's even running down the south side and Overlord activating the Widow Mine. Wow. So Ling's can run, <laughs> in, run in free. And this is one of the last bastions of Pult's economy. Uh, what is what is happening right now? A uh, laser is just picking Pult apart. Yeah, so just perfect play, perfect play. And now, I mean, He's got to feel so comfortable at the, at the, in the later stages of this game. Of course, Paul is extremely resilient and holding on, but all he has to do is still play it out slow, play, play it patiently himself, a laser, get himself back up these positions, and he's found this very, very juicy mining base that he's oh, going to be able wow. to get on top of. Mules dropping right in front of the face of the Mutalisk because he knows he needs to hang onto that base. Paul trying to bring his reinforcements up, but he does get the repair just barely in time, does chase those Mutalisks away. He's actually trying to run on forwards here. I Still don't think he got himself plus three weapons on those uh, melees. So the plus three three from the Marines is really what's trying to really keep him alive right now. And it's doing a pretty good job here. Paul is notoriously difficult to kill, but still, oh. the laser's in a great spot. Keep in mind here, Pult does have those 3-3 three, three upgrades. His army is so well upgraded right now. They continue to be very cost efficient, and he has actually lost 7,000 less resources this game throughout it. But this Mutalisk flock is just continuing to ravage. Trying to dance on about here. We'll move down towards the back lines of this third base. And I mean, Pult's so bust uh, in terms of money right now. He's, he's got a thousand in the bank, sure, but doesn't really want to be replenishing missile turrets to defend with that. The Banelings are going to roll on forwards here through towards the natural again, cleaning up some of this. And a laser, likewise, doesn't have that many minerals himself. He needs to have that fifth base going, but he's still just doing so much damage every single time he swings in. I mean, it comes oh, down no. to where a laser invests, and he's investing in Mutalisks. 35 Mutalisks are on the map right now. He has a poultry yeah. ground army, but he doesn't need it. Pult's bases are spread out so damn far, a laser just hits him where his army isn't. And look at this, even taking on some Marines why in a head-to-head -head fight. Yeah, why on earth not at this point? There are reinforcing ones. Yeah, maybe he doesn't want to sacrifice that much. But, I mean, the thing is, is that he caught so many uh, medevacs there as well, that all of these units keep stimming up, stimming up, stimming up, and he doesn't actually have the money to replenish the medevacs and keep all of this army fully healed up, but Pult is taking a risk there with those, or like a little gamble with those four middle mines. If they're able to connect with the Mutalist slot, they could kill off the entire thing. Oh my god, the Mute is just Gee, taking on go. the ball of Marines. GG, Laser's able to take game number two, and we have a fight on our hands. He is in a happy place there after that second game. <laughs> Shaking his head a little bit in disbelief, maybe thinking, damn, you're really hard to finish off. Yeah. You're one of the hardest players to kill. Yeah, he was in a he was in the driving seat for a long time in that game was a laser, but uh, Paul he just he never let go. He is he's he's basically not Mufasa. There you go. <laughs> he's, that's that's what Paul is. <laughs> he's not Mufasa. There you go. That's possibly the greatest thing that's ever been said in an esports broadcast, Thanks, James. Buddy. It's Thanks. an honor to sit by your side, man. Thanks, man. <laughs> I mean, it, he just hung on. He did it so damn well. It was just beautiful, uh, beautiful play by a laser. But yeah. Paul, he was he was close to getting back in that quite a few times. Yeah, he was, he was. Well, that does it for game number two here. We're going to go to a short break once again, but when we are back, it is the conclusion of our winner's game between Pulse and Elaser.
one more game in here for Group C in the winner's matches. Eliza looks to do the unthinkable here in a group that was amazingly, amazingly stacked. He is one game away from moving on to the top A after defeating Hydra and is now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Polt. All of which I just said would have not been believable in the slightest if I'd have said it yesterday before we saw what happened today. I mean, I mean, we're, we're doing rehearsals before and uh, people were having a bit of a joke around, uh, you know, uh, oh yeah, you know, Laser's going in, uh, getting thrown to the pit of doom. These yeah. sort of comments were getting thrown around, but he's, he's stood up today and it's so fantastic because yesterday I was talking to him and he was saying, yeah, I'm going to make it out of this group, definitely. There's no way I don't. He says, you know, I might lose to Hydra, but... I'm definitely going to beat these other guys. I'll beat Polt. I'll beat Violet. And he's showing it. He actually took Hydra out. He's 1-1 one, one with Polt. And even the first game which he lost was very impressive. He was really in the driver's seat for a lot of that. Now we're going on to Terraform here. Pig for game number three. What are your expectations on this kind of map looking at how these two games have played out thus far? Terraform can be really straightforward in a lot of regards. Uh, though what we might see change up here is maybe a laser will go for a little bit of a faster third, but so far both players have played identical styles. So I very much feel like we're going to see just a strong, straight up mechanics game. We're going to see Ling Bane Muta versus Bio Terran, and we're going to see who is the stronger player. Let's get into it then. Game number three. This decides who moves on to the top eight here between Polt and Elaza. Here in Group C in the number one spot as we have spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner. It is our Blue Terran representing CM Storm. It is Pulse. And up to the top left-hand corner here. On the verge of doing the unthinkable in Group C, it is our Red Zerg representing Team Extreme Supremacy. It is Ilaza. <laughs> What a great run so far. So close to the finish line. This is the point though, where as an inexperienced player, newer to the professional scene, this is where your nerves get tested. When yeah. you're within grasping distance of greatness, I mean, that really, that really is what it would be, greatness, if he makes it out of this group in first place. This is the moment where his nerves are tested. Is he gonna be able to keep it together and show us the concise, decisive play that he's been doing so far? We'll have now seeing how exactly how Polt's going to shape up with this. He's not looking to do anything too crazy early on. He's just positioning that barracks in such a way that he will actually eventually have an add-on go on to it. Gas going to go down as well. So Polt not really deviating too much from previous openers. He likes his Reaper. He likes to get over yeah. there. He likes to just do his standard thing. Often at the highest points in Polt's career, he has been one of those few pro gamers who can be entirely predictable in a matchup and can still dominate. Yes. He is just, uh, you know, a power unto himself. And a laser on the other side looks like he is going to be going for a hatchery first, probably into a pool and a gas. He's really favored getting that Zergling speed, defending with Queens and going straight to two base Muta. I wonder though, here in game three, is this maybe the point where you change things up? You know, I almost would love to see him throw out some curveball, a roach baneling, deny the scouting really well, and suddenly bust out with a bunch of roaches, throw something in Polt's face. Don't just let Polt get in his comfort zone because Polt really seems to have figured out, I think, a laser's aggressive style. And yeah. really, I felt like Polt was in a very good position last game. But because Bridgehead gave a laser that second attacker out, I think, you know, he managed to use his racial advantage. On this map, he's not going to be able to pick Polt apart as easily. Mm. I like what you say about Polt's consistency, though, before. I mean, if you think about Polt as a person, not just as a StarCraft player, he is one smart guy, one intelligent guy. He has just recently, like, completed a course in university, one of Korea's most prestigious universities, in, like, biotech, biochemistry or something. Like, yeah. you just don't flippantly decide to do that. You know, <laughs> he is a smart guy. And if you look, if you put tally up decision-making for a player like Polt, you know, he's probably on the very high-end spectrum of almost always getting the decision right, as opposed to, like, having a small slip-up here and there, so... He uh, really does understand StarCraft. Yeah, definitely. And uh, he's going to come in here once again, try and kill a few Zerglings, put on some damage. He did divert his Reaper around the north side of the map, trying to spot for any early pool Zerglings, uh, as he did previously. Just going to kind of come in here, pick away at these units, and see what he can get done. But it looks like he was so far... 
is changing up his follow-up a little bit, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Almost getting a drone there. So looking back at uh, Polt's base, he's actually not going three Reaper this time. Notice he's immediately built a reactor, and those two Marines, <laughs> oh, if they get an Overlord snipe, that's actually fantastic. Oh, yeah. Really catching a laser there off guard for a moment because obviously he was expecting three Reapers. He wasn't expecting any Marines to be out this early. And that Overlord, he stuck a little round too far there for the party. Yeah, a bit sloppy from a laser. I mean, seeing the reactor, he shouldn't know those Marines would be out. The Overlord is a bit greedy, stayed a bit too close. But what this means is Polt is going to have those Hellions out a lot faster. Notice how at this point in those previous games he was constantly attacking, putting on pressure with those three Reapers, almost killing Queens. In this case, he's not being able to do that. This Reaper's just poking around a little bit, but he's got Hellions on the way. And as those Hellions get there much faster, this is where things start to pick up for him, and it opens up a lot of aggressive timings. Previously, he's loved to do a Medivac Hellbat timing off this, mm -hmm. or a Medivac back Hellion drop in the back while his Marines hit the front. Or vice versa, actually. The Marine drop in the back, Hellion's hitting the main. Yeah, this is a cheeky one, though, obviously, with this uh, all the way in the back. Very difficult to actually scout this kind of second faction play very early on. This is the one Overlord that's going to have the best opportunity, and there is almost no way he is going to be able to get in there and spot this heavy, heavy Hellion play. Oh man, double reactor. This is an old build. Yeah. Nowadays people normally go blue flame on one of them rather, but I actually think this is the harder build to stop. It's a bit more all in from Polt, and like all he's doing is massing Hellions, and he's gonna go out with about 20 Hellions, and basically if a laser doesn't have like a sick wall of queens and a spine, all this sort of stuff, his Zerglings are just gonna be useless against this number of uh, Hellions. The one it's thing really that, scary. The one thing that's gonna give him the heads up though is that he'll see uh, an excess swell of Hellions, unless they get saved up in the back. Uh, and these five are just like the only initial ones, and he's like, oh, oh wow. okay, what's this? Oh. <laughs> he's even building the armory. He's actually yeah. going to turn them into Hellbats as well. This is going to be like the old school mass Hellion attack, but they're all going to be Hellbats. So it's going to be probably about 14 Hellions is when he shows it. Um, so, and if he goes out the south side, exactly. the Overlord won't even see it. So I'm not sure if he realizes he should know there's an Overlord up there. That Overlord is so close. And if that Overlord sees this and yeah. gives some forward warning, it actually changes the situation entirely. Oh, he's lowered the blower supply depot. Perfect play here oh, by Paul. He wow. knows where the Overlord is. That is completely negating the vision here of a laser at the moment. Even that Overlord dying, he's not going to see this before it actually hits the front of his crew. This, this could be disastrous here for a laser. He's got a lot to catch up on. This looks like a light poke at most. You think, uh -oh. oh yeah. And then suddenly seeing that, you go, oh. what the hell do I do against that? That is so many Hellbats. A laser's stomach just sank there. He now knows he's under a lot of pressure, a lot of trouble here. Ling's at the back and get completely roasted up. Spine's going to get killed off as well. Good transfuse is to try and keep it alive. But look at the amount of pressure here. Paul, the three-time WCS champion, is looking to put on here against him, looking to move on to the round of eight. Those Ling's filled out, but all he has is Lings. That's the problem against that many Hellbats. They are not dying off. The drones are going to get roasted up, and Paul has played this fabulously. The Bailing Nest only finishing once the fight was already well underway. The Zerglings never having time to group up and morph into Bailings, and that's what he needed. Bailings or Roaches, just a few Queens could not hang on against this. The perfect build order decision from Polt, seeing the Baneling Nest was late in all the previous games. Mutalisks here trying to pop on out, but even that's not going to matter. Missile turrets are going down here for Polt across his base. He is going to be on lockdown. He kills off the natural expansion. Elaze is putting all of his hopes on this, but seven workers are left because he has workers dying. GG well played, and Polt will move on to the top eight here in the World Championship Series, season number three. And what what talent that was from a laser, but Polt showing. He is so experienced. He knows how to adjust and adapt his play. And those are the true marks of a great StarCraft II player. When you've seen as much action in as many top tier tournaments as Polt has, then you just know exactly how to adapt. And he did it perfectly. Yeah, really well done. But obviously, a laser, this man on screen, is not down and out just yet. He will be going up against either Viola or Hydra in another Zerg versus Zerg. And at the moment, yeah. who can really doubt a laser in his play? But for now, I believe we can head over to the analysis desk where we have the victor moving on to the top eight. It will be Polt talking to the boys over there with Sean and in control. Thank you very much, Kolaris. Uh, we are joined by Polt on the analysis desk. Congratulations, Polt. You've gone through in first place. Um, talk to us a little bit about your day. Um, how did you feel your games went? How did you feel your form was? Uh, as, as everyone knows, I got really nervous in group stage because I don't know I just play bad well to these, be honest these darn European Zergs right <laughs> to be honest 
Eraser played much better than I expected. He beat Hydra and he almost beat me, so I had to pull up my hidden strategy at the, oh, last the wrong game. time. Yeah, well, it was for Hydra, but he lost to him, so he deserves to get that kind of rush. So that is, was I that don't the, regret it. The, the last map was your hidden strategy, the one that you'd saved? Yeah, the hell so, bats. So um, you used it because you felt a little bit under pressure from a laser? Well, anyways, my plan was I. After beating Violet, I expected to play against Hydra, and I was gonna play. I was gonna do it against mm. him, but mm. he lost. So, anyways, it's same. So now you're through, though. Is this where you're like, yeah, okay, Pulse back. Captain America's here. Time to win another championship. Do you feel uh -huh. like you can do that for us this weekend? You don't have to answer yes. Yeah, I mean, you can say He's no. He's a little bit fine. weird sometimes. Before uh, coming here, um, I thought if I get through this group then I have really good chance to win this tournament. Okay, thank you. In control, any questions for our dear friend, Polt? Do you have any other hidden builds for us, perhaps? Polt? You don't have to say which player or for which well, matchup. Just question. say yes or no. Just well, whisper it into my microphone. I can just say, <laughs> to win the tournament, you have to play at least one best of seven. And I don't know how many games I will use my hidden builds. Mm, oh. Cryptic. Maybe some more hidden builds from 2013. <laughs> Just slightly adjusted to 2015, which <laughs> is adding in an armory. Um, so talk to us about other players in this tournament. Who You mentioned in the round of 32, the only type of player you're really scared of is Hydra. Is that still true for you coming into this weekend? Or is there some other player that's kind of stood out for you? I don't know. I... Uh... My worst matchup is TVG right now, so I'm confident against Terran or any Protoss. But any Zerg can beat me. I think I'm kind of weak in early game against Zerg. So, well, I have like a couple of days before I play round of, round yeah. of eight. So if I can find any good way to survive it from early game, then there's no threat. Does it not worry you that there's a bunch of Zergs through so far? I mean, we've got. I know you don't play them because you'd be going up against a second place player, but you know, Zanster's through, Petraeus is through. You know, Jadong may come through a little bit later on. We're gonna have another Zerg come through this group. Is that worrisome for you now? Looking at a potential championship victory, that there are so many Zergs. Not really worrisome because I'm strong in best of five and stronger in best of seven. Mm, that's where he's gonna be best. Well, you're doing great, obviously. WCS is kind of your stomping grounds. But just one question, kind of getting ahead of ourselves, if we could. You are going to be playing at BlizzCon, barring uh, an exotic trip to the Bermuda or something like that. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on some of those top dogs over there? How do you think? Because we haven't seen you play against some of those Kespa players just yet. I mean, do you feel confident about BlizzCon as well? It's. I think it's basically the same. They will study about me, and I will study about my opponent. And who has who makes better mind games will win it. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Paul. Congratulations on going through in first place. Let's check in with the bracket now to confirm Paul going through and lining up our matches for the next couple of days. We have Paul in first. And you know what? Let's all close our eyes together and hold hands. We can do this. We have a laser versus Hydra um, down in that lower bracket, and we'll see that play out. Going to be a, an interesting set of games tomorrow once we get to that yes, stage, Jeff. I am really excited about it. I mean, for God's sakes, guys, we have Snoot down there. We have Marine Lord. We have Hydra. So it's kind of nice because, you know, we all got these predictions really wrong, but it's actually kind of like, hey, those are actually the best players. They've just been upset. This has been an incredible WCS so far. Yeah. Well, how, how do you think about Group C and, and the WCS so far? We're almost going into Group D. We'll talk about that shortly, but up to date so far. I mean, this is still going to be very interesting, right? Because Hydra has two ZVZs ahead of him. And even though he's still the favorite to make it out, ZVZ can be a fragile oh, yeah. matchup. It doesn't have to be. Of course, there is a lot of skill. And there are many moments where you can make the difference. But it's not easy. And it's definitely looking a lot harder for Hydra than I thought it was going to look in the round of 16. So uh, definitely a surprising set of games. All right. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. We are going to go to a very quick break. When we return, we kick off with Group D. And it's going to be a great start to Group D as Lilbo takes on Jadong. <laughs> 